It's Friday night. And interceptors Andy Howarth and Claire Gray are on the hunt for a car that's just sped right past them. It's got straight on, and it must have. It must have gone straight on. They were properly quiet. I think that's it there in front. Whatever that is, it's not hanging about. We're at 70. Andy's an advanced driver for cars and motorbikes and an ex-police mechanic. It's fair to say he knows his way around a set of wheels. So we're up about 55, 60 right now, we're at 50. And he knows the target Merck's a serious hunk of German engineering. It's an A45 AMG. A new one would cost most people a year's salary. Oh, he's seeing us now, look. Come on down. While Claire goes to talk to the driver... Still running. Andy stays behind the wheel in case he decides to make off. Oh, well, there you are, right. Yeah, just t turn your engine off for us, please. Just join us at the back of our car. We can have a chat with you about your speed. The driver seems happy to have a chat. Is it your car? Curtis' car. Just have a sit in back. And as soon as he settles into the seat... Hello, mate. So does a distinctive aroma. You were smoking cannabis? No. Why do you smell of it? I don't know. Do you smoke cannabis? Do you smoke cannabis? No, me does. Right. The man smells of cannabis. So Andy goes to get a drug wipe, while Claire starts with a simple Q and A. So who does this car belong to? To the. Um, I mean, how I need, how I need to explain it to you? Well, it's not a hard question, is it? No, who I does the car belong to? It's the world I'm You put me in a spot. You put me in pressure. That's all it is. But then if you let me speak and give me a bit of time, I'll t I'll tell you everything. Right. So if somebody if somebody stops me in a car and says, "Who does the car belong to?" I can tell them. So yeah. I don't know what, you, what yeah, you're struggling bought, with. Yeah, it's, it's the car belonged to a Birmingham, a company who uh, gives the courtesy car. Right. So who have you hired the car from? You need to listen to my story before you can judge what I'm trying to say to you, love. Well, I'm giving you enough time yeah, and well, you're I'll not listen, telling listen me anything. Listen to me and I'll tell you in the Go talk question. You know, I'm not acting clever with well, you. Well, I've well, asked well, you well, about four times. Guy, I bought this car from a, this guy from Birmingham and the car was falling so I give them back to them and they're repairing over the weekend and they give me this as a courtesy car for the, over the weekend. Right, OK. So is this car on hire from Birmingham? Yeah. Right. So, but it's not though, is it? So do you want to start telling me the truth? It is, it's also good. Right, it's not from Birmingham though, is it? It is. Is it? Right, OK. Because according to my system, it belongs in Bradford. Bradford, Birmingham, Bulgaria, wherever the cars come from, it's illegal to drive it under the influence of cannabis. So open wide and let the drug wipe do the talking. Just lean forward for me so I can get some saliva. I need to get it from the tongue and the sides of your mouth, all right? So... Oh, let's just see if we've got enough there. Yes. It usually takes eight minutes to get a result, but even the wipe's not hanging around tonight. Right, Mohammed, it's five minutes into the test, and it normally has eight. Can you see there, on the cannabis side? There's a positive line there. You're under arrest on suspicion of driving whilst under the influence of cannabis over the prescribed limit for cannabis. While Andy deals with the driver... That could go on. Claire goes to talk to his passenger, who will now need to find another way of getting home. Hello, you all right? Do you smoke cannabis? No. Why does he say you smoke cannabis, then? Yeah, well... You do? So, do you do or you don't? No, I do, yeah. You do? Smoking cannabis is bad enough, but driving under the influence of it can be life-threatening. You were up at 60, 75 mile an hour down there in the 30. And you're driving like that while you're under the influence of cannabis. You are a fatality or an accident waiting to happen. I'm going to conduct a search under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act, OK? Have you anything on you that you don't want me to find? Because if you've got a small amount of cannabis on you right here and now, I might be able to deal with it at the roadside. What are you doing now? I'm just getting you it now. Not right. See you. Right. He's giving Claire a bag of what looks like cannabis. Who oh, is this? Is cannabis then? No, it's fine. It's yours. Okay. Well, the passenger's being cooperative. The driver's mood has taken a turn for the worse. What? 
I'm not acting clever. You are acting clever, bro. Calm yourself down. Well, you calm yourself. I'm telling you to calm Shut down. Up, Go. I've seen yourself. I'm not the one shouting and bawling. Yeah, look, don't tell him to calm down, bro. No, I'm going to tell you to calm down. Because well, I'm if not going to calm down. What if you, you don't, do all I'll do is I'll get a van and throw you in back at a van. So it makes no odds to me. Yeah. You can shout and bawl at me all you like. You won't be the first person and you certainly won't be the last. Ah, sweet silence. And in the meantime, Claire has finished dealing with the passenger. Find this. Not a massive amount of cannabis, just a small amount of personal use. He's walking home while his mate takes a trip to the cop shop. It turns out the driver is currently facing another charge of driving under the influence of drugs after being arrested a couple of weeks before. Get out. And his recent experience means he doesn't want to give a sample of blood. He's scared of needles. And the last time he we went through it, the uh, the nurse taking the test it hurt him. So. Oh dear. You'll have to weigh up whether uh, a little prick in your arm is to worse or better than going to court. The man took the decision that going to court was preferable to having a little needle in his arm. He pleaded guilty to failing to provide a sample of blood and driving without insurance. He was given 135 hours of unpaid work, ordered to pay £710 in costs, and was disqualified for two years. Whoever's horrendous is in a powerful car, he's under influence of cannabis, so he's just a danger, and to be honest, I'd rather him not be on roads at all. Still to come. Exit A hunt for a runaway van. Got him all ready. A drunk driver does some serious home wrecking. We've got bricks from the wall Jesus. on the roof. And fuel thieves beware. Sniffer dog Kai is off the lead. and the colour and the reg again, apologies. It's approaching midnight, and interceptor Duncan Matthews, along with every other unit in the area, is on the lookout for a suspect van. The district officers is saying that a Renault traffic is made off from him, made off the uh, way to uh -oh. Stanley. It's in this area, it's just hit an AMPR camera um, nearby. So we'll just have a look around, see, see what we can drop on it. It's, it's about nearly 10 minutes ago now. Dog handler Duncan's first ever set of wheels was a yellow Austin Metro. Tonight, he's in the less distinctive, unmarked Ford Mondeo. Allowing him to hunt unnoticed. And bingo. That's it. Extra Delta 6 uh, blue traffic van has just gone past me. Um, going out towards Ferry Lane, just off the Eastern Ring Road. But the band's got the jump on Duncan. And when he gets to the next junction, he has a decision to make. Can you see him that way? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Using his sixth sense, Dunk goes the wrong way. X-ray Delta 6 8 is definitely done one from me. Um, I, and it's done one from the district unit earlier as well. I don't know why. Unfortunately, the 50-50 choice at that last junction, I took the wrong one. Given the road it took, Duncan reckons the van's heading into Wakefield, so he spins round and makes for the town centre. And the sixth sense is firing on all cylinders this time. The van is in his crosshairs. Okay, you don't want to I'm behind it. Passing under the railway bridge on Westgate. You're indicating to go along Westgate uh, through the city centre now. There are two other units nearby and they're closing in. As Duncan tails the van through the town centre, a cop car coming the other way blocks it off. Just passing through the bottom of George uh -oh. Street. They're going around. Reversing lights are on. He's going for the ramp. Two tons of reversing van have made a major impact on Duncan's dog van. Duncan's out in a heartbeat, with German Shepherd Tia by his side in case Ram Man and Co kick off or make a run for it. Oh, 
Unsurprisingly, the driver and two passengers don't fancy their chances. And apart from a bit of damage to the vehicles involved, it's been a safe and successful stop. It's very locked up at the moment. They're just trying to find out what's going on with the van. The driver's still down there, yeah? Right, take a deep breath on that. The drive is taking a breath test and blown more than twice the legal limit. He's off to the Nick for a further breath test while his passengers are free to go. Interceptor Richard Clark was in the car that got alongside the van in the stop. So we've gone across the side. He's obviously thought about going for it, reversed into that, and then tried to come across onto our end, but boxed in. Another drink driver off the roads. The driver of the van was later convicted of drink driving. He was fined £235, including costs, and banned from driving for 18 months. Both he and all the officers involved were lucky he didn't do more serious damage with his reckless reverse round. Always work on the basis that the closer you are to them, the less speed they can get before they ram into you, so the less damage it's going to be caused. Had we been sort of 50 yards away from them, we would have built up speed and hit us hard. A little bit of a repair. The guys at the body shop will be fine with that, I'm sure. and diesel prices high and rising, nicking fuel has become big business. Commercial fuel theft alone is estimated to cost UK businesses more than £2 million every year. Clearly secure vehicles, fastening it into containers and parking out over the fence to other suspects in another vehicle. Oh, what? Shows on that fuel. Is that the cross green end? There's a secure. It's coming down cats and dogs in West Yorkshire. And interceptors Dan Robson and Tom Powell are en route to an industrial estate to hunt down a gang of fuel thieves. It's a report of um, some males stealing fuel from uh, what sounds to be some sort of a commercial yard uh, not too far away. Uh, they're taking it from vehicles inside the yard and passing it over to some other males with a vehicle. Is this one here? They arrived to find a car parked outside the gates of the yard. Stop there, stop there, stop there. Let's, let's... And within seconds, they've got a man in cuffs. Four one, have we got a dog? Plus a car boot full of fuel containers. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, let's, let's get him away. They've caught him in the act. That doesn't happen every day. Yeah, yeah, we're caught six. We've got one outside the gate with a vehicle. Um, the rest are going to be inside the yard, I think. But at this point in time, you're on the rest on suspicion of theft of fuel, right? <coughs> And there are still potentially three fuel thieves on the premises. The priority now is to surround the yard so no one can escape. Right, we've got one loading car up with fuel, so the others are still in here somewhere. Um, so, could you guys get round the back onto A63? Yeah. Cor said that there was definitely four of them. We've got one. Um, so hopefully we've got other units containing entry points. Um, quick enough to be able to grab the other three. We've got a dog coming, hopefully he's not going to be too long. We'll get the dog in and uh, hopefully the dog will get a chew. A couple of minutes later... Dog's here. Dog handler Chris Hibbert arrives with German Shepherd, Cap. Thank you, I'm sorry, this one is the time that the um, dog will be deployed. German Shepherd. Uh, the dog will be released! Say 
Kai's train to track recent human scent. And despite showing some interest in a few different parts of the yard, there's one particular area that really gets him excited. Down, down. It's a low wall, which isn't good news. There's a gap there in the, the fence that leads onto the tracks. So it's possible they've either come in there or, or gone over there. Come. Four one uh, dogs indicated to a gap in the fence line parallel with the train tracks, A63 side of this site, either the point of entry or exit. Chris and Kai continue their search. I've given plenty of opportunities. But unfortunately, come up empty. So, Tom and Dan decide to have a look where Kai's nose can't reach. There's definitely not anyone on top you know, or in one of these objects that of things. It seems that the remaining fuel thieves have slipped the net. Unfortunately, we haven't got all four of them, but we've got one of them and we've got the car, so it's a decent result at least. The interceptors disturbed a nifty little production line. It looks like the thieves jumped the fence, siphoned fuel from the trucks using this tube, and then passed the full containers back over the fence to their partner in crime, who is now in cuffs and in serious trouble. There's been at least sort of four or five that have come to do this tonight, and, and they'll be doing it day in, day out. Different sort of commercial industrial units all over Yorkshire. But if they're doing this all the time, they're getting hundreds, if not thousands of pounds worth of diesel. So, it's big business. Still, with one in custody and all the fuel able to be returned to the company it's been stolen from, it's been a fantastic night's work for the interceptors. We've got the car, we've got all the fuel back. It's not often that we actually catch them red-handed. Um, they were saying that they've been done loads of times, so at least we've got someone for it this time. The man was found guilty of fuel theft. He received a three-month curfew with an electronic tag and was ordered to pay £170 in costs. Good little job, good little job. Yeah, it's nice to finish off. All I can smell now is diesel. Yeah. Have you been drinking something? No, I'm all right. Cool. Sure? Yeah. You're just acting a bit strange. Over 70,000 people are caught drink driving every year. Have you had anything to drink today? Yeah. Beer. Beer? How much beer? Mm. Many of them are repeat offenders. You're under arrest on suspicion of you driving a motor vehicle whilst over the prescribed limit of alcohol. The legal limit is 35. Yep. You've blown 123. Yeah. It's estimated that more than 8,500 motorists have been caught drink driving twice or more over the past five years. You know, getting caught one time you think could be enough to stop you from doing that again. I, I don't know what goes through people's heads with it. But sometimes, they, you know, the registered alcoholics, they've clearly got a problem. Maybe, you know, they need to get a bit more support or maybe they just need the family to intervene and take the keys off them. I don't know why people take the risk and put these people put people's lives at risk doing it. It's a miserable night, and interceptors Nick Priestley and Stephen Wright are out on patrol and taking particular care behind the wheel. The roads are very greasy tonight, so um, it may well be that we get one or two offs um, for no apparent reason whatsoever. Um, because it is quite, quite slippy tonight. They haven't been out long when Nick's predicted outcome, an off due to slippy roads, appears to have occurred in a potentially lethal manner. We've got reports of a vehicle that's gone into a house, in that big house. Uh -huh. They are pleased with it. State the driver's OPL. Can you attend, please? Well, uh, a report of a, uh, a car that's gone into a house been described as clearly drunk, so we don't we don't know what, what we're going to get. All we know is a car to a house and a drunk driver, so we're not a million miles away. 
They arrive to find utter carnage. A car has veered off the road and smashed through a garden wall into a house. Jesus Christ. The driver is already in cuffs. Uh, yep. While Nick helps his colleague with the breath test, Stephen goes to talk to the homeowners. Thankfully, they're not hurt, but their new house has been devastated. I'm just going to have a look up, a look outside. I'm no structural engineer, but I could do with uh, I could do with knowing that this building is going to fall down in any time soon. Keep going, Ty. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, babe, thank you. It's pretty clear why the driver's crashed his car. How much above? Yeah, legal limit's 35. You're in 70s. So yeah. So it's. Uh... But given the damage he's done. The driver's lucky not to be facing more serious charges. That's a mess. From what I can gather, I think he's obviously been coming this way. I think he's hit this car over here, possibly, which has sent him over here. And he's, I mean, he's been going at some speed. We've got, we've got bricks from the wall on the roof. We've, the roof's been pierced. We've got bricks that have gone through the window that are in the kitchen, which is at the back of this house. So he's been doing some speed there. I've got two really shaking elderly occupants in this address. I was sat watching t TV. There's an uh, enormous bang. The window shattered. Bricks from the garden wall flew through the house and into the kitchen. Fortunately, I was in the front room on my own. While their colleagues stay with the occupants of the house, Nick and Steve take the driver back to the Nick for a breath test. Big deep breath and blow. Keep going. Excellent. Thank you. Well done. Brilliant. Well done. It turns out he's been hit before. He's only just finished serving a ban for drink driving. Um, 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 I don't know. Uh, you are over the drink driver, mate. So I'll be into the car visit. The driver's bond is 61, nearly twice the legal limit. Second time. How's the last back him on following that? 22 month uh, disqualification for drink driving. Clearly learned his lesson. <sighs> he is a career drink driver and he's never ever going to stop. Um, and just luckily, nobody else were involved with nobody passing. The man was later convicted of drink driving. He was fined £315, including costs. And though he narrowly avoided a custodial sentence, he was banned from driving for 40 months. If he doesn't get a prison sentence this time and he offends again, he'll definitely well, be in prison. Yeah, uh, this is his last chance before he starts seeing a bit of porridge. Um, you know, we, we don't want him on the streets. Coming up! Stella! Seven words. The interceptors hit the language barrier. Yes, uh -oh. it is a good position to Hit the language barrier. With a disqualified driver. We've just seen you driving. I've just watched you get out of the car. Who won't come clean? West Yorkshire is a diverse area. There are estimated to be more than 140 different ethnic groups in Leeds alone. Where are you from? Poland. Where are you from? And roughly the same number of languages spoken. No, 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 no. speaking. That's fine. While some interceptors can parlay in foreign tongues. Hablo español. It's not a prerequisite for the job. For that, they have a translation service which they can call up any time, anywhere. It's invaluable, really, because the amount of people that we deal with daily that don't speak English as the first language, if we didn't have that, in certain scenarios, it would make the job pretty much impossible. It's rush hour, and interceptors Dan Robson and Dave Milnes aren't battling the traffic and on the hunt for dodgy drivers. So it's a um, Friday late turn in Leeds. It's, as you can see, really busy, so we're going to try and get into the side streets where it's a bit quieter and see if we can find some naughty boys to go and upset. 
Hip hop lover Dan's upset a fair few naughty boys in his 16 years policing the roads of West Yorkshire. And as he and Dave drive through Hare Hills in the east of the city, a car going in the opposite direction triggers his Rongan radar. That's it. That's KLD, was it? They run the plate and it backs up Dan's hunch. Is it, er, uh, Fabia? Yeah, no insurance. The motor expired. The car stopped and parked up. The man's got out and he's walking off. Fella, let's have a word. You. That, yeah, that's your car. Yeah. 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 Let's have a word, mate. Jump in. Jump in. That's a simple enough instruction, but the man doesn't seem to understand. He's fixated on the tarmac. Oi. Hey. Hey. Drop the sand in. What's up with you? Yeah. Your key? Yeah. All right, I'll tell you what, you have a seat in there, I'll find it. I can't see anything. Just get in the car and I'll find it. We know working. You're not working? No. Uh, Martin. He's trying to say that he's got a key because we've just caught him driving without insurance. So, we'll have a word and see what he's got to say. Down you. This is a Martin video. He's got quite a lot to say. This is a Martin video. Or actually shout to a man on the pavement. Fella, just be quiet. Martina, this is a video gone. Fella, the window's shut. You can't hear you. Speak English, my we'll, friend. We'll get an interpreter. What language do you speak, fella? Check. You check. Me no driving, Martin. Right. Martin driving. Listen, we've just seen you driving. I've just watched you get out of the car. No, me. Martin. You must have a very short bed because you can't live straight in it. Uh, what's your name? Joseph. The man, who was clearly getting out of the driver's seat of the Skoda, is Czech. And while he speaks enough English to deny being behind the wheel, Dan and Dave are going to need some professional help. Right. Let's get an interpreter on. Hiya. Um... We have to uh, check interpreter, please. Shh, I'm top. On the phone. Yes, check. Hello, hello there. Hey, it's PC Robson from Lee's Traffic Police in West Yorkshire. Can you just start by introducing yourself to this guy and then um, after that we'll caution him? Once they're through with the formalities, it's time for the questions. In English. Why were you driving the car? Then check. I didn't drive it. I didn't drive the car. He did. Oh, you are shown as disqualified from driving. Are you aware of that? No, I said that to you. What do I need to do when I have a car and I drive Martin? Why would I drive a car when I am disqualified? Martin was driving the car. So, yes or no? Are you disqualified from driving? No, I know that I have a car to drive, because I didn't call and I didn't sit. That's the longest yes or no in the world, is that? Uh, I, I know I'm disqualified, that's why I didn't sit behind the steering wheel. I'm not stupid. If I were driving, I would say I was driving. You just passed us at a distance of no more than two metres. You're wearing a high-vis tabard, and I just watched you get out of the driver's seat of the car. Despite facing potentially serious charges, the man has a more pressing concern. Our washing machine has broken down and uh, he was just bringing washing machine for us. Uh -oh. It is true there is a washing machine in the car, but the driver's not coming clean on anything else. I didn't drive the car and what I've told you is the joke. Right, I beg to differ, but never mind. Dan's had enough. But he's happy that in this verbal chess game, he's now got this deceitful driver in checkmate. He was definitely the driver, because um, I've seen him as his pastor's going the opposite direction, and then we've spun round, and I've watched him get out of the driver's seat of the car, so he can claim all he wants that he wasn't driving it, but tough 
Cash coming in, he's going to call. Dan's got one final thing he needs translating. Can you just ask him, does he want the washing machine out of it? If he doesn't, he can still get it back. I will not put the washing tomorrow. So, while the car and the washing machine head to the pound, the now non-driver walks to his next destination. Dan and Dave get lied to all the time, but it's the first time it's happened in Czech. And just to refresh their memories, they review the onboard camera footage. It's a, it's no one Life is. And it's him that we've gripped. Yeah. There was nobody so else in there. Getting out of the driver's mm. side of the car. Job done. Happy with that. That's it. The man was later found guilty of driving while disqualified and with no insurance. He was banned from driving for two and a half years and sentenced to two months in prison. Oh dear. I like the bit where he goes, if I was driving, I'd tell you I were driving. Really? Yeah, like everyone that's disqualified from driving tells us they were driving. 